Right, time for a thriller now on this lovely uh, 10 inch 78 RPM Shellac Columbia record The Man in the Ditch Part 1 by the great Edgar Wallace Thriller told by the author it says This is Part 1 I am going to tell you the story of The Man in the Ditch I was returning from Cheltenham by road one wintry night as I came through the village of Winthorne, I very naturally slowed my car. The last time I was here, I'd seen the end of the Sullivan Kennedy field. There was the house on the outskirts of the village, a long, ugly cowshed of a place which the two Sullivan boys had built and where the family had lived after they had found London too hot to hold them. Why they went into Oxfordshire, nobody knows. But in this house, they had enticed the two Kennedys and had killed them. It was a not sordid business such as a police reporter meets with in the course of a day's work. Originally, the Sullivans and the Kennedys had lived in the borough, the district south of London Bridge. What started the feud, I don't know. It came out of the trial, but it's not important. These things never are. I stopped the car and looked at this nasty little house. There was no light, no sign of life. I wondered what had happened to the ferocious sister who had been carried screaming out of court a month ago when her brothers had been sentenced to death. And I wondered if the feud was still operating. I let the car run on and was glad when the house was behind me. It gave me the creeps. It always did. A few minutes later, I struck a deserted stretch of road. You know the place. It lies near Wilton. I didn't see the other car until I was almost abreast of it. It lay drunkenly over the side of a ditch. Its radiator smashed. The body crumpled. And then I saw the man. He was crouching down behind the machine, and at first I thought he was dead, and pulled up my car in little more than its own length. I carry an electric torch in my pocket, and with this I located the wreck. As I focused the lamp, I was startled to see a face come up from behind the hood. It was the white, peaky face of a man. He was unshaven, and when he opened his mouth and I saw his ugly teeth and heard his hoarse voice, I began to regret that I'd ever read the story of the Good Samaritan. He glared at me for a moment and spoke. You're asking for trouble, ain't you? He hardly said the words before I heard the sound of an explosion, and a bullet came nearer to my face than ever I wanted a bullet to come again. Put your light out, he said. He spoke like a cockney, and his voice was urgent. I put the light out. Come into the ditch, and she won't get you. Who, I asked. The Sullivan girl. He's behind that gate on the other side of the road, he said. I followed him into the ditch, the water up to my knees. It was not pleasant. And when somebody fired another shot in our direction, it was less pleasant. There's a stone hut or something, he said, wading along. It's in that field. Oh, them Sullivans. They're hot. So the feud was still raging. And this, I presume, was a member of the Kennedy faction. Right, side two of this uh, lovely Columbia record. Uh, it's uh, Edgar Wallace reading A Man, The Man in the Ditch. A thriller told by the author. Then we reached a gap in the hedge and scrambled through. I could see the hut now, a roofless little building with low walls. All the time I moved, he grumbled, in a low, complaining voice. It's a car, I mind. Bought it a month ago from a fella for 23 and 10. This comes of trying to save car fares. I looked back. My own machine was still standing by the side of the road where I'd left it. She didn't get you. You're lucky. She had a wire across the road and broken glass. I got both. How do you know it was the Sullivan girl, I asked. He chuckled at this, saw her, just as she loosed off at me. Seen her before, too. She came to me when I was in Gloucester doing a job and tried to scare me. I was mad to come this way through Winthorne. I forgot them Sullivans lived here. All the time he was speaking, he was peering over the broken wall into the darkness. You're one of the Kennedy crowd, are you? I asked. He gripped my arm suddenly. Keep down, whispered. 
She knows we're here. She's come in through the hedge. I crouched by the wall and heard nothing but the patter of the rain and the wind. Then a voice spoke, a woman's. Come out, you dirty murderer. I saw a hand come up over the wall and in it the outline of a Browning pistol. In a flash, my companion had gripped the wrist. I heard a scream and the pistol dropped onto my foot. Come and help me hold her, he shouted, as he scrambled over the wall. I went out, but I didn't help him much. It was like grappling a, a tornado. But he held her tightly enough, and I put the light of my lamp upon her face. She might have been good-looking, probably was in normal times, and now she was like someone in Spain. She shrieked and screamed, but said nothing that was recognizable as human speech. She's only got one gun, said my companion with great satisfaction. These Sullivans are hot, gunning for me on the King's High Road. What are you going to do with her, I asked. Leave her, mister. You go and start up your car. I'll never start up mine again. Twenty-three from ten, not worth a bob now. It comes of saving railway fares. Go on, I'll bring her. I went ahead, but not too far ahead. I didn't wish to be involved in another Sullivan Kennedy tragedy. As I set the car going, he gave the girl a push toward the ditch and jumped onto the running board. For a while he stood there, peering back as the car gathered speed. She's all right, he said, and dropped into the seat by my side. Women are funny, holding me up. He began to laugh softly, as though he was enjoying a good joke. Stop me at Oxford, Governor, he asked me. What have you done to her, I asked. Nothing was a surprising answer. It's what I'm going to do that caused all the trouble. I'm seeing our brothers tomorrow morning. Drop me at the jail. Why, I asked. Because, he said, I'm the hangman. Fancy paying 20 feet from 10 for a car. I ought to have known better. Remember, folks, it's not tornado. It's tornado. That's called the whole thing off. Oh. Thanks for watching.